Mr. Mayor. Thank you. What's your name? Good to see you. How are you? You wanted to bring me here. Yeah. Why? Because this is an example of a neighborhood, Melrose in the Bronx, that is really suffering. But there are things that can be done to address income inequality. Mayor de Blasio wanted to take us on the two trains up to the South Bronx to show us one of the affordable housing projects his administration has been promoting. We went from a neighborhood where the median household income was $179,000 to here in the Bronx, $21,000 for a family below the poverty level is the median income here in, in this 20, neighborhood. In 20, 25 minutes. Correct. That's all it took to go from one world to another effectively. I, I've often talked about the tale of two cities, you know. Our mission is to try and create more fairness, more opportunity across the board, and we're using the tools of the city government to do it. And to those who say, Mr. Mayor, that sounds too socialist. Capitalism, not perfect. America, not perfect economically, but the best example there is in the world. What do you say to them? There's no contradiction between a free enterprise system and a very energetic role of government creating fair regulation and making some of the adjustments we need so that people can participate in the society fully. Look, we don't say oh, there shouldn't be public education, right? Obviously, I think there should be a muscular government role in creating affordable housing. That's how it gets done. Where is that right balance? Because you don't want a society where everyone has the same. I don't think it's conceivable to have such a society with human beings involved. I want a society where there's opportunity for all. I want a society where no one's left out economically or otherwise. A 20-year-old named John approaches the mayor, saying he's homeless. He says he's been living in a shelter since he was 17 years old. I am a homeless youth, you know, having a house, and I want to know how, how can you help us? Because we, we struggle all the time. Homelessness in this city has risen under your administration from 50,000 to 57,000 people right now. Why? Because of the same tale of two cities I've talked about. The weight of the economic crisis of the last uh, few years has been felt more and more. What we found in the city is while people were becoming economically less stable, losing their jobs or, or in jobs that just didn't pay much more than the minimum wage, uh, the cost of housing kept going up. So the basic economics stopped working for more and more New Yorkers. I could not agree more. In fact, I think that's... One of the most difficult trends in America right now... Which is? Which is income segregation. Uh, it's not just racial segregation, it's income segregation. As we are segregating by income, we're creating different societies that have almost nothing to do with one another. Let's talk about fast food workers and their fight to make at least $15 an hour. 15 is fair and reasonable. It's what we need. Otherwise, we're all paying in our taxes a great deal of money to keep people out of poverty who have full-time work. I read half of New Yorkers are at or near the poverty 46%, line right now. 46%, yep. I can't put myself in those shoes. I don't know what it's like to live in that. I never have. But what I know what's worse is if you lose that job. And I know that at LaGuardia Airport right now, I order my food off of an iPad. So how do you make sure that doesn't happen? Is there a danger in raising the minimum wage? I think there's a danger in not raising the minimum wage because what it means is folks are so hand to mouth. There's no disposable income. There's no optional purchasing. And that holds back the economy as a whole. You were Hillary Clinton's campaign manager for her 2000 Senate race. Yes. You've said you have, quote, tremendous respect for her, but you have not come out and endorsed her. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I want to see the vision fleshed out. I think uh, when she announced her candidacy, uh, I thought she was arguably the most uh, capable and uh, experienced person to ever run for the office. But I said we're facing a profound economic crisis and a kind of inequality we've never seen before. We need a set of solutions. To her great credit, she has, with each passing week, put more meat on the bone. So and she's have, getting you closer to her? Well, I think she's getting a lot of Democrats closer because she's speaking to the issues at hand. But the point is, there's still some outstanding issues that I, for one, need to see, and I think a lot of people need to see a little bit more on. But this is why we have these debates. Is there one thing she could say to you? A couple of issues that I think need to be addressed more clearly in the context of this primary are the $15 minimum wage. And obviously the trade issue, which is a, a very, very important one for the future of the country. I'm very pleased at what I've seen, because the Democratic candidates are talking about income inequality constantly. Poppy, it's quite obvious that if you want to get a good idea across in America, you need to put on a hat. So I want you to hear, you can, you can examine this. And you made hats. We made hats, and we think they are really... Are you focusing too much on Donald Trump? Uh, I think this hat says it all. 
I think it just, uh, you know, we, we realized we could get it down to four words and put it on a hat. Do you little envious of Trump's poll numbers? You think it's all in the hat? I think the hat may be the, the magic piece. And now that we're promoting a progressive agenda with the hat, let's see where it goes.